Deaf noodles. 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 What on earth happened? If you've been on YouTube over the past few days, then you've probably heard the name Deaf Noodles. Recently, he's been ridiculed for a terrible comedy event that he live streamed. You're like my cousin if you are a girl. <laughs> All right, <Miranda. laughs> but many of you may not know that there's a lot more to the story. In fact, Deaf Noodles has been heavily criticized over the past two years, with a lot of it falling under the radar. And as it turns out, he's not just unfunny, he's also manipulative, vindictive, and the very archetype of a corrupt, scummy YouTuber that we know all too well. Today, we'll be going through Deaf Noodle's past, uncovering his scandals and controversies, and finding out why this comedian is one of the most hated on all of YouTube. The legendary John Swan. Deaf Noodles, whose real name is Dennis Feitoza, is an actor and comedian living in LA. He's worked and performed in numerous venues throughout his career, and is a self-professed master of comedy. I have a background in comedy. I trained literally for years as an improviser. <laughs> yeah, I got boy problems. I've performed in basically every major theater and comedy venue in New York and in LA. How'd you win your career? Just a little. Supposed to hold me down. Every stand-up place, every place that you can think of and you can find on Google, I have performed there. As a side gig, he also started a YouTube channel in 2018, where he reacted to popular videos and meme compilations. Hi, what are you doing? Taking a bath. <laughs> Send me a pic. Okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> bye. Well, uh, the, 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 yeah, the, you know. Really just the most top tier content imaginable. But Dennis was proud of his content and the things he was making. So proud that he submitted it to YouTube commentator Kavos to review on a live stream. Whoa, Deaf Noodles. Your channel is a bit of a madness. He's basically Sniper Wolf. Soy Boy Sniper Wolf. All right, let's just watch Area 51 memes. Area 51 raid me. Uh oh. Where are they? Oh, wait a minute. This guy literally just reads out memes. He just reads them out. What is this? Okay, if you just took him away, bye bye. Don't have him here and just play this video and let the memes roll. This video would be better instantly. This one bad review from Kavos sent Dennis into a crisis. While he initially seemed to respond constructively to Kavos's scathing criticism, he uploaded a video the next day expressing his thoughts. And he wasn't too happy. I'm just going to be completely honest with you guys. I've just been kind of sad over the past few days, ever since that whole thing with Kavos, where he basically tore my channel apart. Everything he said has kind of been cycling in my head, and I've been thinking about it and thinking of new ways that I can improve my channel. I am kind of going through a small personal crisis, if that's what you can call it. Over the next few months, Dennis did actually try a few new things, eventually finding success covering the Onision allegations in late 2019. But then, in early 2020, the unforeseen happened. A pandemic swept across the world, sending everyone into immediate lockdown. And some of the most highly affected were those working in the entertainment industry. Performances were cancelled, comedy clubs were closed, and poor Dennis was left without a main source of income. In response to this, Deaf Noodles drastically stepped up production, gradually transforming his channel into a one-stop source for internet news. These videos were incredibly high energy and consisted of Dennis wearing some cat ears, screaming into the microphone about all of the newest internet gossip. Dirty Dom returns to the internet, Trish Paytas goes off on Nikita Dragon, James Charles gets exposed again, and PewDiePie goes off on him. By the way, folks, I'm happy to say I had the exclusive privilege to catch the brand new Matrix, which takes place entirely in a JC Penny. Irrelevant news. Through this content, he obtained the most amount of fame in his entire career. And at the same time as his YouTube growth, Dennis also cross-pollinated with his Twitter account, making multiple tweets a day about all of the latest gossip and drama. He quickly became incredibly popular on the site, and it was during this sudden growth 
that I started to take notice of him. Deaf Noodle's tweets were also cited as a legitimate news source by several prominent publications, such as the New York Times and Insider, and this only further added to his credibility and influence. Very soon, he was firmly cemented as the place to go for all the latest in online culture. We do have a guest though, one that uh, is beloved in the community, one that reports the facts, the news, the gossip, and all the drama. It's the one, the only, Dennis Deaf Noodle. <laughs> what? But Dennis didn't just cover the petty side of internet drama. His account was also the catalyst for serious stories about some of the biggest influencers at the time. One of the main stories that he can be attributed to breaking in 2020 was Bryce Hall throwing parties during the middle of COVID lockdown. <music> Deaf Noodle's tweets about the situation were sourced by dozens of legitimate publications, such as TMZ, BuzzFeed, and The Daily Mail. He was even interviewed by Insider about the story, further establishing his credibility as a legitimate source for internet news. Honestly, Dennis's page carried more influence than most journalists on the platform. But despite their similarities with their style of reporting, there was one major distinction. Journalists have some level of editorial oversight, and Dennis just had himself. And because he didn't have anyone vetting his tweets, he would eventually fly a little too close to the sun. On August the 22nd, 2020, Deaf Noodles would be embroiled in his very first major internet controversy. It all started when he posted a tweet reporting on a leaked video clip of Charlie D'Amelio allegedly vaping. While it's definitely weird that grown men are reporting on what teenagers are doing in private, that wasn't even the worst of it. In the replies to this tweet, Dennis posted some screenshots of him reaching out to Charlie D'Amelio's parents, asking them to comment on their daughter's vaping. And he even went so far as to reach out to Charlie herself to ask for comment about this leaked video clip. The internet did not react well to this tweet in particular, racking up over 4,000 quote tweets, with some of the most popular ones garnering over 100,000 likes. Deaf Noodles tried to justify himself, but it was of no use. Charlie D'Amelio's fans ended up mass flagging the leaked video of her vaping, and it was subsequently removed for violating Twitter's rules. But a few days later, Dennis would return to Twitter, and his response was more insane than anyone could have ever expected. He posted dozens and dozens of tweets, claiming that everything on his entire account had been satire all along, and that he was actually playing a character. He claimed that the overly serious tone in his tweets made his content satirical and silly, and that his account was all just an experiment. The crazy part about this was that no one seemed to realize that Deaf Noodle's account was a joke up until this point. His tweets were genuinely no different to what every other digital journalist was doing, but at a much greater scale. And the people that followed him did so because they saw him as a legitimate source for internet news. And that's evident by how many publications cited and referred to his work. The satire behind it is that I'm not a journalist and I am doing what a journalist does. Like I, the fact that I take myself so seriously as a journalist in this context and that the way I present things is so serious, that's what's supposed to be the satire. Like I don't know anybody else who takes doing this stuff while not being a journalist that serious. You know what I mean? Like if they're a journalist, then it makes sense that they're like that serious. But I'm not, I'm like as far as you can get from being a journalist. It's like very hard to figure out who's a journalist these days or what journalism actually is well, because I everyone is their own publisher. People take you seriously because A, your tone is very serious. And that, but that's the intention. But people aren't getting that intention. <laughs> I, I'm trying to have like a more like nuanced aspect to it where you could think that this is like a real journalist, but like the reality is I'm playing a character. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how I see it. But I don't think your audience feels the same way. I uh -huh. think your audience doesn't know or understand because you're not like poking fun at anything. You're just stating fact. You do solid reporting. Like the, the reporters I know use your work. Like that's, yeah. that is a testament to your ability, but it's uh -huh. not satire. 
Gotcha. Like, it's not it's not a joke. Like my worry is you post something that you feel satire, but your audience takes as real and then it becomes this whole big thing that like, you know, can put someone in jeopardy. To a lot of people, all of this just seemed like a cop-out for all of the backlash that he received off his Charlie D'Amelio reporting. If he could claim that everything he was doing was a joke, that he could play off any and all backlash that he ever received. And in the coming days, Dennis would double down and overcompensate, posting clearly photoshopped DMs of him reaching out to people that didn't exist. And it didn't take long for people to start questioning what was real and what was fake. It's not always clear which part is real and which part is a joke and what the joke even is sometimes. And as much as he says it's all a character, I don't know if I always believe him. You know, he, he clearly gets something out of reporting in his way about this world. And he knows so many people's names. And I'm like, who are these people? Despite this bump in the road, Deaf Noodles would eventually move on from this drama and his account would continue to grow fairly steadily over the coming months. But his tweets continue to scratch the heads of many, myself included. It really was difficult to distinguish what was satire and what was supposed to be legitimate, serious reporting. In a conversation that Dennis had with me on a stream, he said that whenever he wanted to report on serious issues, he would include a disclaimer in the tweet itself. However, over the coming months, Dennis would start to get sloppy, and he eventually dropped the tag completely, reigniting the very issue that these tags were meant to solve. And this was only the beginning of Deaf Noodle's carelessness. If there's one thing you definitely shouldn't be careless about though, it's your online privacy. Which is why I partnered with Atlas VPN for today's video. They're offering a huge discount right now, which means you can get a three year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee using my link in the description. VPNs are something that everyone should be using, whether that's for privacy, to bypass those pesky region locks, or just to stay secure online. When I research videos, sometimes I have to trawl through some pretty sketchy looking websites. Atlas VPN masks my real IP address from websites I visit, keeping me safe and secure. But it's also useful for unlocking content that's unavailable in my region. For example, the newest season of Better Call Saul isn't available for me on Netflix in Australia, and it's the same for all you Yanks watching. But if you flick on Atlas VPN and set your location to the UK, you can enjoy the newest season without having to fork out for yet another subscription. Time is running out to take advantage of this huge discount, a three-year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Use my link in the description to sign up, and thanks so much to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. And now, back to the story. He's out there. His name is James Charles, and he is preying on children. He's acting reckless. He's messaging fans for hookups. That's actually a crime that he has committed. And not only is it like a crime, it's like a very serious crime that has victims involved in it. I don't think James is a victim anymore. It's just disgusting, and all of these people need to legitimately have their platforms removed. In March and April of 2021, Serious allegations of grooming and inappropriate behaviour were levied against beauty influencer James Charles. In these early days, the allegations were spread all across the internet, and it was difficult to fully understand the scope or scale of what James was actually being accused of. So Dennis decided to create a mega thread, cataloging all of the allegations against James Charles. And it quickly became the most popular thread about the allegations, amassing over 4,000 likes on the first tweet alone. This is all comes from Deaf Noodles, by the way, who's done a great job of archiving all this. However, just looking at it, you could draw a conclusion that this may not have been done with the right intentions in mind. Disregarding this though, cataloging and bringing more attention to serious allegations is definitely something that people are allowed to do, provided that the allegations are sufficiently vetted and researched beforehand to make a reasonable effort to verify their authenticity. This is something that creators should take pretty seriously. You don't just want to platform a very serious allegation without airtight evidence to back it up. The perceptive among you may see where this is going. On April the 5th, 2021, Dennis published a new allegation to his Twitter account. 
Who could have seen this coming? James Charles exposed by 14-year-old boy who alleges James Charles reached out to him in Instagram DMs, asking him to add him on Snapchat. Boy informs James he's 14, and James replies, how about now? If we take a look at the TikTok created by comedy creator Sammy Sens, it's an obviously faked DM conversation. And if we look in the caption, it's literally tagged with hashtag meme. Not to mention that in 2016, James would have also been a minor. Dennis made no effort to research this whatsoever. I mean, the guy couldn't even look at the caption of the TikTok that he posted. And even if he were to say that this was a joke, it was so poorly executed because it was laid out in exactly the same way as every other serious allegation that he posted to his mega thread. He did delete the tweets, but only because his own fans started to call him out in his replies. It's moments of carelessness like this that marked the beginning of the end for Deaf Noodles. And it would only get worse as the days progressed. Five days later, on the 10th of April 2021, Deaf Noodles posted a new allegation to his account. This time, it was a different TikTok, uploaded by I'm Kian Jones, alleging that James Charles had offered to fly him out to LA and solicited nude images from him when he was 15 years old. He sent a video and basically this is what I put, like the outfit, if you need a place to stay, if you ever come to the US, you can stay with me. Which, yet again, is just pathetic because by my Instagram, I do look like a teenager. And I know this is just my fault for leading it on, but I did say, hi, I, I sure would stay with you. And then obviously he said, we can book a hotel and have a good night, which then I did say my age, I thought I'm 15. If you notice something a little bit off about these messages, you are not alone. In fact, just about anyone that's used Instagram DMs should be able to tell that something just doesn't look quite right here. I mean, for starters, the sizing of the text is just completely off, and the conversation just flows so awkwardly. Like, who works on a video before getting ready for the day? Like, just makes no sense. And then he goes on to say, show me a video describing yourself, which I obviously did, me not thinking anything of it. Okay, so Kian sends James a video of him talking, and then a few messages later, James asks where he even lives. Like, he couldn't have just picked it up from the strongest Stoke accent that I've ever heard in my life. And who offers to pay for your flight, like, 10 minutes into the conversation? The whole thing screams fake. And naturally, this led some to express concern over the validity of the messages. But despite this, the 15-year-old continued to maintain that the messages were not edited. And of course, instead of investigating himself or asking for extra proof, Deaf Noodles just blindly believed him and refused to remove the tweets. Eventually, one of Dennis's followers had to scrutinize the 15-year-old themselves. And wow, would you look at that? They were blocked after questioning the validity of the screenshots. It was only after this point the Deaf Noodles finally deleted the tweets. But he didn't apologize. He didn't admit to any wrongdoing, and he didn't even issue a formal retraction. He did, however, turn off his replies so that no one could criticize him for his unacceptable, sloppy reporting. But by this point, it was already too late. The tweet had amassed over 1,200 likes, and you can be sure that many more thousands saw it and believed it. In contrast, his note saying that he deleted the allegation only got 300 likes. And all of this happened because Dennis was so consumed with the story and wanted to be the first to report on every accusation. Oh, sorry, no, no, no I forget. It's all just satire, isn't it? The following day, in a move that absolutely everyone expected, the 15-year-old made a video apologizing for faking the allegations. Hi guys, so I'm coming on to just apologize to absolutely everyone about the James Charles situation messaging, but it is fake and it was my stupid, stupid, irresponsible idea to even do that. To try and ruin someone else's career and try and gain clout in a way. Honestly, I am so sorry from the bottom of my heart. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate and I do deserve that and I do and I really don't care I do deserve a lot of hate I'm just on here to say I'm so 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 sorry 
Dennis reported on this in an extremely tasteless way, headlining his tweet with influencer apology of the day. Once again, no accountability from Dennis for spreading misinformation to thousands and thousands of people. When you have the kind of credibility of deaf noodles, with news articles sourcing you and people like H3H3 promoting you, this kind of malicious, careless reporting is pretty unacceptable. And it's a slap in the face to victims as well. Platforming and promoting false allegations is so damaging to real victims of any sort, but especially those involving influencers. Because a single slip-up can give the influencer in question the ammunition necessary to rebut the claims based on one inconsistency or mistake, even if the majority of the allegation is valid. And this very thing happened when James Charles responded to the accusations two months later. There was basically one drama channel on Twitter that started a thread and started compiling a list of anybody that said literally anything about me on social media. And after what felt like weeks of somebody new coming forward every single day, it eventually became the 20 victims of James Charles. Now, when I say that literally anything and everything was being added to this list, I really do mean anything and everything. But the worst part about all of this is that on top of all of those situations, there were countless videos posted that were completely fake. I'm not talking about somebody un sent a message or somebody took something out of context, I'm talking about conversations that fully never happened that were edited from beginning to end. Now, to be fair, there were several other drama channels and even news outlets and reporters that were calling out this person for knowingly posting fake stories and information time and time and time again. And I'm really, really appreciative of that. But the problem is we are such a headline driven society that people don't see that information being corrected or, you know, being taken down. All they see is that initial headline, which literally said the 20 victims of James Charles and that's the information that sticks with them. In my opinion, there were some legitimate things to criticize James for. I think he was extremely negligent, and an influencer of his caliber should definitely know better than to go messaging fans without knowing or asking for their ages. But sloppy reporting and platforming of damaging false allegations give people like James the ability to weasel out of giving a proper response and taking accountability. And make no mistake, Deaf Noodles directly caused this outcome. This situation was the first time where Deaf Noodles accumulated a posse of detractors, with one of the biggest being none other than our favorite internet news channel, Killer Keemstar. Over the coming months, he made multiple tweets, videos, and podcasts calling out Dennis for his terrible reporting. Basically a new danger that has popped up that is threatening the entire YouTube community. Deaf Noodles is a bitch. I mean, we're talking about a straight up A-class puss. He's gotten so pathetic. If you're gonna lie to your audience over and over again, eventually you're done. And of course, in response, Deaf Noodles made countless videos targeting Keemstar. Like, look at how many videos there are with Keem in the title. It's actually kind of astounding. Obviously, there's way, way too much lore to go into in this video, but the cliff notes are that these guys despise each other for their respective reasons, and they talk about each other all the time. Well, at one point, Keem stepped things up a notch and made a tweet satirizing Deaf Noodles' style of reporting. Deaf Noodles has allegedly groomed girls from ages 12 to 15. Big YouTuber source. Victims are scared of him and wish to stay anonymous but may come forward soon. Deaf Noodles has declined to give us a comment on these allegations made against him. So, did Keem go a bit far? Yeah, definitely. But a lot of people saw this as giving Dennis a taste of his own medicine. Some argued that if he was going to publish verifiably false allegations time and time again, then he should know what it feels like to be falsely accused. Keemstar's tweets sent Deaf Noodles into an unhinged rampage, and he made dozens and dozens of tweets over the following days, covering every single Twitter spat that Keemstar got into. And he even went so far as to dig up clips from Keemstar's past, some older than a decade. Needless to say, Deaf Noodles' hatred of Keemstar runs deep, and the flinging of allegations didn't stop there. On the 13th of July, 2021, Deaf Noodles was permanently suspended from Twitter due to rule violations. While Twitter never gave any specific reason for his suspension, it is notable that it came just 10 days after James Charles indirectly called out Deaf Noodles in his response video. Now, this is pure speculation on my part, but I don't think it's unreasonable to assume that James's legal team may have sent a letter to Twitter demanding that action be taken against Dennis. But we'll probably never know. 
Keemstar actually publicly stated that he was going to try and get Def Noodle's account back, despite his best judgement. So, of course, Def Noodles went onto his Instagram and directly blamed Keemstar for his ban, because that is very sane and logical behaviour. In my opinion, there is only one person responsible for this most recent suspension. It is no coincidence that my Twitter accounts got suspended mere hours after I made a video responding to slanderous claims Karen Star made about me on a recent live stream. In my response, I lampooned Karen Star's obsession with me and pointed out that his social media accounts are all dying. It's like full on conspiratorial to assume that Keemstar would have some sort of overarching pull at Twitter. And even if he did, the entire company is run by a bunch of clowns that take ages to do anything. There is no chance Keem could have messaged someone and gotten Dennis's accounts taken down within hours. But with Def Noodle's termination, people talked less and less about him over the coming months. And honestly, he was largely forgotten by the majority of his detractors. Everyone just kind of did their own thing, and he faded into obscurity. But one thing you should know about Dennis is that he just can't seem to let things go. So even when staying silent would have been his best course of action, he decided to rekindle the drama in one of the most unexpected moves ever. Nearly one year ago, Keemstar knowingly published false and defamatory allegations against me. He claimed I groomed numerous underage girls. Keemstar has since confessed twice to fabricating these allegations to punish me. He has never officially retracted these allegations, nor has he ever corrected them. These allegations have caused me great harm socially and professionally. I am now suing him to clear my name of these false allegations and to hold him accountable for knowing making false accusations. Yes, you heard that right. Deaf Noodles, the one who is notorious for making false allegations, is suing Keemstar for making false allegations. The lawsuit itself is a pretty long read, but the summary is that Deaf Noodles is seeking damages for the reputational injuries that apparently rose from Keemstar's tweet. But somehow, Dennis thinks that his damages exceed $75,000 which is completely laughable, especially considering that he called Keem's Twitter dead just a few months prior to filing the suit. And on top of this, he wants another $75,000 because he supposedly suffered severe mental anguish as a result of Keem's tweet. Once again, pretty ironic that this is coming from the guy who published verifiably false allegations against others as well. Disregarding the irony of the situation, when I read the filing, I did actually think that Dennis had a pretty strong case here from a purely legal standpoint. Keemstar did post something that was verifiably false, and he admitted to it. And to be honest, it does seem like Keem's tweet came from a place of malice, regardless of the context and backstory. I really thought that Keem would take the L here and settle, but I should know by now that he doesn't give up so quickly. A few months later, Keemstar's lawyer published his response to Dennis's suit, and it completely changed my entire perspective on the potential outcome of this lawsuit. Plaintiff Dennis Feitoza is a 27-year-old comedian who has created a fictitious comedic character named Deaf Noodles. Feitoza has admitted and explained in publicly available internet posts that Deaf Noodles is a show I created. It's a mix between The Soup and The Colbert Report, a satirical take on internet news commentary hosted by a cat in a Minecraft house. Fake joked around on a podcast about the Deaf Noodles character being mocked by competitors and others, saying, They're attacking this character who's a fictional cat in a Minecraft house who just doesn't exist. It's all meant to be a joke. I'm not a journalist. He has repeatedly admitted that everything the Deaf Noodles character did and said was meant to be a joke. And always satirical. The subject tweet does not reference Fake it is aimed at the Deaf Noodles character that routinely mocks and attacks other YouTubers using allegedly caveats in phrasing and fake sources, and importantly, it follows as part of a long-running volley of insults and claimed satirical rants specifically posted by the Deaf Noodles character towards Keem. Who would have known that Deaf Noodles' insistence that everything he did was satire would come to bite him in the ass like this? This epic clapback from Keem's lawyer states that the case should be dismissed on the grounds that Keem's tweet is not about Dennis, but Deaf Noodles, the fictional character created by Dennis, and that Feitoza was not defamed as a matter of law. Another reason for dismissal was that based on the totality of the circumstances, it can be reasonably implied that Keem's tweet was supposed to be a joke. And lastly, Dennis never cited any actual damages in his case, 
He didn't show a loss of subscribers, followers, or any other measurable metric. He just pulled a $75,000 figure out of his ass. While I don't know what the outcome of this suit will be, Kim's lawyer is clearly very good at his job and makes Dennis's original complaint look like complete child's play. I will, of course, keep all of you updated on any new developments as they arise. Before I play you guys the teaser for part two of this series, I want to quickly talk to you about something exciting that I've been working on for a while. As someone that's been editing for many, many years, I know how difficult it can be to find resources on useful editing techniques. Sure, there's tutorials out there on how these programs work. I watched them myself when I got into editing. But the workflow always sucks. They never go into how to achieve specific effects or discuss the theory behind why things look the way they do. I was pretty much on my own and I learned everything I know through trial and error and by trawling obscure forum posts from years ago. One day, I had a thought. Why not compile all of the knowledge that I've gained from years of experience and put all of it in one place so you don't have to go through the same pain? So that's exactly what I did. My Patreon has a plethora of helpful video and audio editing lessons that go through the workflow and effects that I use on a daily basis. I talk about everything from the bare basics of Premiere Pro to complicated 3D scenes in After Effects. And if you're stuck on anything at all, I'm available in my Discord server to answer any questions you might have. You can get access to all of this for just $10 a month with new lessons added every single month. I offer some higher tiers as well, such as editing breakdowns, where I go through each of my videos and dissect the effects and techniques I used, all the way through to editing calls, where I'll sit down with you and answer your questions as a group or one-on-one. -on -one. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, head over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash or click the link in the description to check it out.